I think we can all agree that there are a lot of risks to our money. In this video, we're going to be breaking down six ways to protect yourself and to protect your money from the coming dangers that lie ahead. We all see them. There's economic financial instability, there's political instability, there's social instability, and the news is constantly talking about new events to be worried about, but there isn't enough focus on the ways to protect yourself. And in this video, we're going to be talking about six ways to protect yourself from these dangers that lie ahead. I'm here with my good friend, Steve Penny. He is the creator of the Silver Chartist newsletter. It is the best free and paid newsletter that is out there to break down what's happening in the global financial system and the best ways to protect prepare and protect yourself, especially with mining stocks. He's an over-the-shoulder newsletter breaking down all types of commodities and how to make money off of this massive currency devaluation. I'll link that right there down below. That's the Silver Chartist newsletter. There's a free newsletter in the description and pinned to the comments. I'm a subscriber myself, and I highly recommend you check that out. Shout out to our sponsor, Vizla Silver, one of our favorite silver and gold mining stocks. So thank you, Vizla Silver. If you enjoyed these six steps, be sure to give us a like button on this video. If we're missing any important ones, you can let us know in the comments right there down below. And it's good to see you, Steve. You bet, brother. Thanks for that kind intro. Uh, it's been too long and look forward to chatting with you. And one of the things I like so much about your channel and your intro there is, you know, we all know about the problems the world faces right now. Everyone knows about that, but not too many people focus on the solution. So I know that's your focus and look forward to a good conversation. Yeah, absolutely. So today's theme is going to be six ways to protect your money. And to really, at the end of the day, that means protect ourselves. So let's start off with number one. We've been talking a bit about debt. So let's talk about number one way that you listening can protect and prepare yourself. Yeah, I just jotted down a couple of notes here and they're no particular order. But the first thing that comes to mind for me is avoiding consumer debt. Um, you know, in our culture, especially here in the United States, almost everyone borrows to consume. And that's just not what wealthy people do. And especially in this environment that we're heading into, I think avoiding consumer debt is going to be so important. Having a budget, avoiding consumer debt, that may sound really simple, but I know there's a lot of people in our community, in the precious metals community, who understand inflation and Fed monetary policy, who might say, oh, well, now's the time to take out debt because you know inflation is just going to eat away the real value of it. And there may be some truth to that, but um, I, I kind of take a little bit of a different take on that one. And we just saw recently that consumer debt has jumped to the highest level in a decade. Right now, $15.6 trillion in consumer debt. And it is certainly easy when we are getting behind to just maybe start putting a couple more things on the credit card instead of maybe either adjusting our, our lifestyle or raising our income, which is what we're going to be moving here in a minute. So, number one, avoid consumer debt. And, and, and Jake, um, and, and before we move on to, I'll just be transparent, like something I, I wrestle with. I, personally, I don't have any debt. The only debt I have is my 30-year fixed rate mortgage. And I locked that in at like 2.6 something percent um, for 30 years. So that one, it's, it's hard for me to bring myself to pay it down because I do think inflation is going to eat it away. But at the same time, you know, playing that game, I know a lot of people who do that with um, real estate, you know, they'll buy a lot of real estate on debt and say, hey, the inflation is going to eat it away. And that might work out. There's instances of historical precedent where it has, but that's that's to presume that the bankers lose because, you know, the, the bankers are the ones who l lend that money. And, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to imagine that JP Morgan is going to lose and the average retail investor is going to win in that scenario. So I'm, I'm kind of torn on that one. That's, that's one exception where I'm wrestling through it on my, on my own. My new life mantra, Jamie Dimon never loses. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now, one of the ways that I think is so important is to be looking at our income. And I want to bring that over to number two. You talked about resilient income. So what does resilient income mean? Yeah, I think there's a couple of aspects there. Uh, number one that maybe isn't talked about as much is making making yourself more valuable. Uh, if we do are headed into really rough economic times, which I think we both agree on is going to happen, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of downsizing. A lot of people are probably going to lose their jobs, and making yourself more valuable at work in your current position 
is um is really important. Um, and then of course you know multiple streams of income. I you you stress this a lot and rightfully so. Uh, I should probably talk about it more. But having multiple streams of income that that's really valuable. And a lot of people don't know where to start with that. But I, I would say you know start small. There's a, we all have a, a sweet spot where our passions and our abilities intersect, and just start sharing that, whatever that is for you. It can be anything. If you start sharing it with other people, you know, you might gain a following and you you can certainly monetize that by helping other people. So that's something to consider. Yeah, you can buy all the Bitcoin or gold or silver in the world, but if you don't have dependable cash flow, yeah. especially in today's world where there are so many socioeconomic and political risks, you never know what can happen to one source of income, whether it's an internet business. I know firsthand with this channel, uh, you know, being in YouTube's dungeon a few times, you can see that. But then, you know, it's not just the internet. People have seen it with brick and mortar businesses in 2020 as well. I like that term resilient income. And you said resilient income for you is twofold. And you said, number one is to start to develop your value. And number two is to develop multiple sources of income, correct? Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, make yourself more resilient, more more valuable. Learn learn new skills. Um, yeah, and it, like you said, it doesn't have to be the internet. I I've been at this for a while, and I, I failed at many things. Um, and finally, I found something that really is working for me, because you know I, I I'm passionate about it, and I'm it's where those passions and abilities intersect. But it can be as simple as this. I remember my wife and I, you know, when we were really struggling early on. Um, you know, my, my plan was to go. Uh, to yard sales, buy buy high ticket items for really big discounts, and then sell them online, like Craigslist or something. And you know, I, I remember thinking that could have made you know a thousand bucks a month. Well, there's a million ideas like that, you know. Um, so you can get creative, and we, uh, if if you've thought about it, now's the time to start. Do you know who Gary Vanacek is? Yeah. Yep. There's a really funny. I'll have to send it to you. I'll I'll put the link in the description for everyone listening. It's a really funny. To think the comedian's name is Trevor Wallace, and he pretends to be Gary V at yard sales, and he and he's dressed like him. He's got the voice down, and he's like, he's like, <laughs> he's like, uh, how much is that spoon? And the guy's like, five bucks. He's like, I'll give it to you for five cents. And he's like, not five cents, fine, two cents. And it's just this really funny bit on that reminded me of it. Um, but on that subject. I mentioned your story recently. I was just talking to one of my good friends the other day, and he's in a job that's starting to pay him pretty decent money, but he doesn't love it. And there is a ceiling on it. And he's always had this other vision of something that he wants to do. And he's been quite defeated trying to figure out one, how to make more money, but two, how to get to where he wants to be. And and I used your story as an example I always say, treat your job like an investor. Like it's become so popular in motivation and online world and instant gratification. It's like, you don't like where you are, just quit it. But one thing that you did that my wife did quite well is you leverage your existing job to create the stability to build a side business or a side hustle at the same time. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that because I think that that's so important because we can think, well, I have one job, so I can't do anything else, or I have this job I don't love, I should quit it. Whereas instead, there's almost a third route that you utilize that I brought up to my friend. And I said, put together your goals and start treating this job like an investor, double or triple your savings, and then you can start building this side business at the same time. And you did a good job of that. Yeah, 100%. It's it's really nice to start any kind of new business as a, a side hustle. Because the, it takes so much pressure off. I mean, had we just launched Silver Chartist and made it my full time income right off the bat, I, I, I think it would have worked. But my gosh, that would have been a lot of pressure, especially when you got kids to provide for and a family and everything. So I, I think that's really smart the way you put it there uh, gradually and see what it turns into. Okay. No, now, number three is about leaving the system. We're seeing. More and more, a lot of times the money we think is ours isn't ours. Russia just learned that with the reserves. A lot of people in Canada learned that that funding and donating to the trucker protest. And we've even seen some of that in America as well, debanking. But there's not just the political risk of that. There's also the economic risk of that. We saw in Cyprus when they had their financial meltdown, their people's bank accounts were all frozen. So let's talk a little bit about leaving the system. 
Yeah, I, I think it's probably never been more important to have some of your assets outside of the traditional banking system or financial system. And of course, the immediate answer is gold and silver. Uh, and everyone knows where I stand on that. But there are other things you can do too. Um, you know, you can, if you have savings account, you know, why not keep some of the cash in a safe in your house? Um, because there's new threats now. A lot of people who are into gold and silver and hard assets, their primary driver was always inflation and Fed monetary policy, and rightfully so. But now there's all these other reasons emerging to have some hard assets outside of the banking system. And those include what happened with those truckers in Canada. I mean, you bought a trucker lunch, they could come to, uh, freeze your bank account. Um, and now we're hearing from Klaus Schwab. It, I mean, you can't go at, uh, a couple hours without hearing uh, the threat of a cyber attack from mainstream media. I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but that's just another reason on top of the existing reasons to have some assets outside of the banking system. Of course, gold and silver makes sense, but there's other things as well. Productive real estate. You know, I, I like platinum. Um, I like other tangible assets. How real do you think the prospect of bank bail-ins are and what are they? Yeah, I, that's a really good question. I think it I think it's probable instead of possible. I'm not going to say give a percentage on it, but I think it's probably more likely than not because they put that regulation in, in place, what was it, uh, 2013 or 14, somewhere around there, and they they did a test run on it in Cyprus. And you know, when you have your deposits in a bank, especially in the United States, you're you're no you're you're now um, an unsecured creditor, and the the precedent has been set in Cyprus where they take your uh, cash and turn it into you know uh, shares of stock in the bank or CD or whatever. But th that's a bail-in where you no longer have your money. And it's kind of the opposite of a bail-out where the government just gives you, prints the money to bail out the institution. And so, what yeah, legislation just, were you referring to? What legislation were you referring to? My gosh, I used to be able to just rattle it off. It's been a while since I looked at it. Um, it was around 2013. Well, what was the scope of it? Well, th they changed it to when you put your money in a bank, you're, you're now an unsecured creditor to the bank. And uh, it paved the way to make bail-ins legal so that they can take your property, your your deposits, and bail it in. Use that use those funds to bail out the bank, as opposed to the government printing money to, to bail out the bank. As Gregory Manorino says, become your own central bank. So yeah. um, that's number three, is leaving the system. Mm -hmm. Number four is practicing contentment. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Practicing contentment. Uh, I'll be honest. This is something I, I struggle with on my own. It's I think it's in our human nature to always want more. And there's nothing wrong with having goals and things, getting nice things for yourself. But you know, if you're never content and there's always a next thing, you're never going to be satisfied no matter how much money you have. So I think that's just something we should all practice. Practice contentment, uh, contentment with, with what we have and uh, being a wise resource of what we've been a wise manager of what we've been entrusted to uh, manage. So pr practice contentment. I just, I don't think there's much to expand on that, but it's, it's really important. So we got four, you had an interesting one for number five, and I like the way you said it. I had never heard that before. What's, what's the fifth way to protect your money? Yeah. I, I worded it as bringing forward future purchases of essential items that are going to go up in value. So an example, it sounds like you and I both, this shows how we think alike. We, we both just did this recently. I went and bought an additional freezer for my garage and stuffed it with, you know, organic meats and nice food. That's going to, I got about two years worth because what's going to, what's the worst case scenario is we just use it. Um, but in a worst case scenario, you know, we've got food if the grid goes down or some kind of major emergency and that food's only going to be more expensive a couple of years from now. So I brought, I took purchase purchases of things that I'm going to need anyway and bought them now. And we do that with a lot of things. Um, it's, it's an inflation hedge and, you know, it's a good way to kind of prepare for potential supply chain disruptions and shortages. The, the shortages are real. I, mm -hmm. I haven't done a video on that, but whether it's the UN, I mean, two weeks ago, Biden said that food shortages are real. Um, and there's been all these emergency talks with all the G7 countries. And a simple thing everyone can do is get an extra deep freezer and just fill that puppy up. It's something that, that you don't want to do in four months. Mm -hmm. This is the early stages of a massive, massive, massive supply disruption and food shortage. And it's an easy thing to do that can make sure that 
whatever happens. I mean, imagine, look at these people in Shanghai. I mean, they can't even get water. They can't get food. And that's another one of the risks that we cannot control is the geopolitical and socio uh, in general social ramifications of this instability as we enter the fourth turning. Uh, Steve, as a last one here, I really love what you had to say. What's that? Yeah, the last one is, uh, and this is a phrase I learned from my mentor, Jerry Robinson, one of my mentors anyway, he said, I think like a producer, not a consumer. And you know, to, to me, that just that one simple mindset shift really changed a lot of things in my life. And you, you talked about having an entrepreneurial mindset. So a lot of things we're talking about really happens between your two ears. And just thinking like a producer, not a consumer, thinking like an entrepreneur instead of an employee can really open up some opportunities that otherwise you may not see if uh, you know you, you think the way that you're conditioned in the schools and the colleges and everything. You know, We're trained from the time we go from kindergarten all the way through college. And if you get your PhD, w- w- what the education system does is train us to be employees. Now, there's nothing wrong with being an employee, but a lot of us hate our jobs. That's where it's a problem. If you're doing something that you're not meant to do and you're not fulfilled, you know, that's not the only option for you. And, uh, you know, I think having that entrepreneurial mindset is key. I always like, I heard it in a Bob Proctor money seminar. He talked about how to, when people are talking about how bad the economic climate is to remind yourself that many people got rich during the great depression Mm-hmm. And it's one thing to to know what's happening, right? That's important to not be ignorant. But it's another thing to start to use that sense of urgency to improve our financial life. And he used to put a bump. He said that he used to put a bumper sticker that said, "There's a recession coming, and I will not participate." <laughs> and uh, I always love that one. So awesome. uh, that was six ways to protect yourself and your money. Let us know in the comments down below if you missed any big ones. Steve, you've got. A uh, really cool new app coming for the Silver Chartist. Got accountability. You've got a community, and you put together a whole app. So for everyone listening, right there down below, you can sign up and get the free version of the Silver Chartist in the link in the description. But tell me a little bit about the app and what's coming. Yeah, part of our premium membership has included a private Twitter feed, and I love I love it and I hate it because I, I love the community and how we can facilitate uh, communication with each other. But it's Twitter. And, you know, we don't want to be censored. We don't want to be told what we can talk about. And we don't want all the distractions, you know, the advertisements down the side and telling tell us what's happening at the Oscars. I mean, I, don't, I didn't even know it was the Oscars until it's all over my Twitter feed. And now I got to look at that. So what we did is go, went and created our own, our own app that is better than Twitter. It's, it's better than Facebook and it's better than a blog because it's kind of like all three. So it's a really new, nice new platform. You can download it onto your Apple or your Android device, or you can just have it on your desktop. And it's going to allow us to really have a tight knit community without third party control, without distractions, and um, r- really enable community as we work together to achieve our goals. Our, our purpose is time, freedom to pursue life's higher callings, things of eternal significance. And that's what Silver Chartist is all about. Steve Penny making moves, putting together an app, The Innovator. So uh, we want to thank everyone for listening today. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, bell notifications, what notifies you for new videos. Let us know in the comments right there down below if there's any ways to protect yourself and your money that we missed. And be sure to check out the Silver Chartist newsletter in the description and pin to the comments right there down below. And we will see you next time.